on the road on our Walmart to Walmart tours, we don't get much entertainment. But when we do, we're watching Trucker Josh. You should too. Flatbed Trucking, Sam Rides. Tell them all about it, Sam. Tell them, they're on your road. Tell them, tell them, Sam. Tell them how it is. Whoop, 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 whoop. There you go. <laughs> You ready to go on a trip, Diesel? Gotta be quiet. Shh. Mom's still sleeping. Got the rock and roll shades on. Got the seatbelt on. Weasel, hey, wanna be a part of this? We're gonna rock and roll. Hey. Fine, sleep. Somebody's gotta do some work around here. Come on, come to life, baby. I'll put you in neutral. There you go. There you are. Oh, I've got a new steer tire on here. Uh, and I've also got my new e-log system on here, which is very interesting. It's a whole new setup here. Take a look at this. I guess you can't really see it because of the, the glare of the sun, but my whole new e-log system. Hopefully it doesn't confuse me too bad. Just gonna make sure I have my fast card with me so that we can get across the border. There you go, there's the fast card. I want paperwork up here. I wanna get this truck detailed soon. I'm not as good at detailing it. I can detail it all I want. It's never as good as when someone who actually does it for a living does it. I guess that kind of makes sense. All right. You have 13 hours and zero minutes of remaining drive time. Do you hear that? She's got kind of a nice voice, doesn't she? Oh, I think we're gonna be good friends. Check this out, let's try it again. You have 13 hours and zero minutes of remaining drive time. Too loud, too loud, too loud. Okay, we gotta find the right volume, right? Where her and I can communicate the best with each other. Okay, how about that? You have 13 hours and zero minutes of remaining drive time. What's that buzzing? Maybe one less? One less, okay, how about that? Well, thank you, my new friend who doesn't have a name yet. Cool. I usually turn the volume right off on my e-log. I don't need it telling me what it can show me right on the screen. It shows it in big numbers right on the screen that I have 13 hours left here in, on Canadian hours of service. You don't really have to tell me, but... Mm, you know, your voice is a nice change from Mandy's. No offense, Mandy, I get kind of tired of you after a while. I'm going to throw you out the window eventually. I'm saving up for a new GPS, so I tell you. Mandy and I are going to part ways. We've been together for like 10 years. Yeah, sometimes, you know, sometimes you just got to move on. To the newer, the newer models. <laughs> All right. Let's get out of here. I don't know what I'm trying to do, trying to do here. Got everything ready? Got everything ready? Ready, 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 coffee cake. Well, we had a little short delay with this new e-log system already. It already wasn't working right. Uh, I started driving and it wouldn't kick me into drive. It would just say I was remaining in off duty. So I turned around and went back to the yard and uh, looked into it a little more. I called into uh, the headquarters of the company that works with this e-log. And we figured out that it's not registering that my ignition is even on. So for all it knows, I'm getting towed across the country. <laughs> it didn't even register that the ignition was on. So we checked all the wiring, all the wiring was good. Couldn't figure that out. Turn the ignition on and off, on and off, on and off. That wouldn't work. So eventually we went to the solution that fixes practically 99% of all the world's problems. We rebooted it. We just unplugged it and plugged it back in fixed. It's now working just fine. Apparently that is how you fix everything. That's how I fix most things. You turn it off and you turn it back on. So now I'm officially on my first trip with this new e-log system. I mean the rules are still the same unfortunately. But this uh, whole computer. I used to have the the computer part up here, the screen up here, and the brain was in the back underneath my bunk. 
now the computer screen and everything in the brain are all right here on my dash all in one so it's a lot more compact and smaller I think it's gonna be a better system I, I like it so far it's easier to work with so far other than the initial having to reboot it I'm in an e-logs an e-log either way I don't like it but I've got to be careful on these roads now my usual route across to highway 75 which takes me to the US border uh, it's spring restrictions right now and I can't go there with a full load I think it's set at 90% axle weights and I'm pretty much at 100% I don't want to risk a ticket going across there. So we got to go all the way down to uh, St. Pierre, past St. Pierre, to Highway 23. And then take that across. That'll shoot us out at Morris, Manitoba. And then we turn south on the 75, which then turns into the I-29 in the U.S. I want to make it to Black River Falls tonight. That's the goal. It'll be a full day's drive. It's about 900 kilometers or... You know, 550 miles or so. I gotta be there by midnight so that I can get going by 10 o'clock. Because I have an appointment right next door to there at 10.30 tomorrow morning. So the latest I can arrive is midnight, otherwise I'm gonna be late for my appointment. I have to stop for my 10 hours or my e-log won't let me. It'll get mad at me if I move. I can still move the truck. It'll just get mad at me and it'll send a, a message back to the office saying that I'm being a very bad boy. I don't want that. And then I get a phone call, and then they tell me I've been a very bad boy, and then I don't, I don't want to be a bad boy. I don't really know what would happen. I've never actually driven out of service before. I've never actually broken that law. I, I don't know what would happen. All I know is they get an email, and then they call me, and I don't know. Maybe I, I'm sure there'd be some kind of punishment. Maybe incremental punishments. Maybe because it's my first offense, maybe I'd get a smack in the wrist. Maybe they give me a smack in the face. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe it'd be like World War III apocalypse. I'd rather not find out. I'm working with the head cam here every now and then. I like this view a lot better than just you guys sitting on my dash. Sort of get to see what I'm looking at. A little bit better. So we're between Grand Forks and Fargo, North Dakota right now, headed south. Interstate 29 that we're rolling over. We still got a long ways to go. According to the GPS there, we got 691 kilometers. That's seven hours of driving. So I'm guessing that's about 400 and some miles. I'm liking this new, uh, new ELD system, electronic log device. So far it seems to be working very well. I mean, it's exactly like the other one. It just looks a little bit more fancy. I like that. It looks a little nicer. Not much to show you guys. So, I mean, like, look at this. <laughs> Though a lot of you probably live in areas that are nothing like this. So maybe this is interesting to you. But this, this is what I grew up around. I live just north of here, just across the border. And it's exactly the same. Flatlands, farmers everywhere. Everything smells like manure, especially this time of year. <laughs> but it looks like all these fields have been seeded already. That one over there to the right has been seeded. The one to the left has not even been cultivated yet. That was corn last year. Okay, so... Well, they'll probably plow that up or cultivate it soon and plant a late crop in there. Uh, unless if they're just planning on leaving it. That'd be a lot of a lot of land just to let sit for a whole year. It's a lot of lost money. I don't know. I'm not a farmer myself, so I don't really know what they have planned. I helped out on a farm growing up. We sort of uh, lived on a farm. It wasn't ours, but uh, you know, I helped out on that farm for a few seasons while we lived there, and I learned a little bit about the whole seeding process and harvesting. And it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. But uh, I was a little too young to fully understand and grasp everything that was going on, so... Didn't quite get it. Those were also my teenage years, which, like any other teenager, I'm a little bit troubled, but... I mean, not nearly as bad as some. But, yeah, I went through some stuff. Who hasn't, right? 
I'm 31 years old now, so I'm pretty well pulled out of all that and well on my life path. But yet, you know, I used to think 31 was old. That, oh, I'm, I, I, everyone who is over 30 must have everything together in their lives already. Nah, that's not the case. I'm 31, I still don't know what I want. Like, don't get me wrong, like I'm, I am happy with where I am in my job, my career, my marriage. But you still feel like the same way you did when you were 21 in a way it's I feel like I still got so much to learn and so much so much that I don't know right and there's a lot to learn and I don't think you ever stop learning what do you figure diesel time to go outside it's definitely time for me to go in there and get a coffee we're in Rothsay Minnesota our regular stop uh, what exit is that again? You guys, I, I've said it many times before. Can't think of it right now. I'm a little bit tired. I didn't sleep too well uh, last night. And I wasted this whole morning with this new e-log trying to get it to work properly. And now we're just stopped here for a half hour break. I'm going to walk the weasel. Run in there, grab a few things for myself. And we still got to get all the way into Wisconsin tonight yet. Another close to six hours. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> oh boy. Oh. So this is what we got behind us. Just 14, 14 bundles of two by six economy lumber. Two by six by 10 feet. And then my tarps at the back there. Diesel, let's go this way. A little bit closer over there. Not quite too far of a walk. Not that I'm being lazy today, but we really honestly don't have time. I have another about 21 minutes until my half hour break is done. And I don't want to waste another minute. I want to get back on the road. I have to make sure I get to my destination tonight. <clears throat> Pardon me, tonight. So that I can take my 10 hours and deliver on time tomorrow. You see, this cornfield here, as small as it is, this has been cultivated and plowed up already. I don't know what that other farmer was waiting for before. But what do I know? I'm not a farmer. I'm a trucker. Not a farmer. Diesel. You almost done there, bud? Come on, find a good spot, man. Find a good spot. I trust your judgment. There, that's a good... That, that's your tree now. We won't watch. That's weird. Good boy. I just love springtime so much. All this new life. Everything's turning green. Just love it. On some of these economy lumber loads that aren't wrapped or tarped or anything, you see on the top there? Those are still doing fine there, but you gotta be careful because the center pieces sometimes like to wiggle out like that. And uh, with the smaller boards, especially like the two by twos or the two by fours even, likes to happen a little bit more often. You gotta be very careful. I'm pretty sure that this used to be a Tessero not too long ago. A Tessero fuel stop. Now it's an Arco. I guess they changed that in the last few months. Even down here in Minneapolis, Minnesota, the sun stays up quite long. It's after nine o'clock in the evening here now, and the sky is still pretty light. Further up north in Canada, the northern sky at this time of year doesn't even go dark. And if you go all the way up to northern Canada, the sun doesn't even set. Same as Alaska. I love this time of year. This is my favorite time. We're coming up on my favorite month. I keep forgetting, but every time it rolls around, I remember June, my favorite month, weather-wise. I mean, everything is so green. It is so warm. The days are super long, daylight hours. 
super long, sun doesn't even really set. Not too, too bad of bugs out yet. Everybody's all excited because we've been cooped inside all winter and we're finally able to go outside and enjoy camping and swimming. The lakes start warming up to the point where you can swim in them towards the end of June. And you know you got all summer ahead of you yet. And it's not too hot. You know, once you get into summer like July and August, it gets really hot up in our part of Canada. Like really hot, like 100 degrees Fahrenheit hot and humid. But then end of August, it gets really dry. I mean, we get everything. And then we go back down to winter where we have Christmas, the best time of the year. And then after that, we have uh, hell. If hell was cold, down to minus 50, minus 60. It's just such a, a roller coaster of a life living in Manitoba regarding the weather. It's just nuts. We get everything. But there's no place like home. Well, it is that season. We were just talking about it. We were using the other name for it before, the uh, summertime. It's also known as construction season, as you know. And Wisconsin is no exception. See, what I don't understand is like they, they block off a lane here for like 20 miles. Yet they only work on about maybe one or two miles at a time. My question is why don't you just block off the section of road that you're working on, like maybe even that week, instead of blocking off a whole lane for 20 to 30, 40 miles, and then not work on it all. There's nobody working here. This guy with the flashing orange light over there, what are you doing? You're just probably sitting there doing nothing? No, he's just setting up cones and stuff for no reason. There's no actual construction going on here. They're setting up cones. <laughs> I'll never get that. And they couldn't put them like in the other lane either. They got to put it partly into our lane, so we got to drive on the shoulder. Oh, oh, dude, you almost hit the cone. The guy in front of me, he was like half an inch from that cone. <laughs> Just pulling into the rest area here in Menominee, Wisconsin. It looks like people are parked way out here on the shoulder already, which usually means that the rest area is probably full. Eh, hopefully there's a spot for us. Uh, figured I'd start looking here. It's pretty late already. It's 10 to 11. I could park right there. Yeah, I could park right here, right by the light. Why not? Yep, this is our spot for tonight. Get my truck off the road. And right in by this guy. No, I'm gonna keep going. I don't like this spot tilted too much. I'll find another one. Hopefully. I don't like it that it's right around a corner like that. People might drag their trailer into my truck that way. Uh, okay, okay. I'm nice of this guy over here to park so far away from that guy. Could have fit another truck in there. You guys would just tighten up a little bit. Is there room at the inn for Trucker Josh and the Weasel? Come on. Somebody tell me you saved a spot for us. Come on. Oh, there's a spot up there off to the right. I like that. Right in front of this ASL guy. Asshole. <laughs> ASL. Right in here. Beautiful. There's no no parking signs, is there? Okay, well, we're gonna hang up the imaginary park here, Trucker Josh signs. And make ourselves at home right here. Beautiful. Okay, yep. 
Yep, we're gonna leave these windows rolled up. Oh, it stinks like pee out there. Oh, what, did somebody just dump their sewer into the ditch right there or what? Diesel, your poor nose is 100 times more sensitive than mine. Man. Shut her down. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, that feels so good. Oh, my hair is falling out though. I probably shouldn't do that. Oh, okay. Let's let the E-Log gods know. The new E-Log gods. Oh, no, no, no. That's not what I want. Hey. Okay. No, 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 no. I'm not off duty. I'm in the sleeper berth. Sleeper berth. There you go. Okay. See? 10 hours from right now, we can get going or we can start our pre trip, which will be pretty much at 9 o'clock. And I gotta be there for 10 30. It's gonna be pretty close. But we can do it. We can do it. Right, Diesel? We can do it. Have faith. Okay, well, I gotta walk you, so plug your nose, buddy. It stinks out here. Guys, like, there's a bathroom. This is a rest area. They provide, this is this is not just a rest area, this is an American rest area. Running water and flushing toilets. That way. It really isn't that hard. It's amazing how, how good they have it down here. How wonderful it is for them. And they still don't use the toilets. They still just pee out in the parking lot on their tires or just off beside their truck. It's why I see it so often at like American truck stops and American rest areas. Not all the time, not too often, but every year, you know, once in a while, I see it and I'm just like, you have no idea how good you have it, man. I would love it if we had flushing toilets in our rest areas in Western Canada. Now Manitoba actually does. But Alberta, like Alberta of all places, they just have like a hole in the ground with a little hut built around it. That's their rest area. And people still use it. I, sh I shouldn't sound like I'm complaining. I'm just going off on a little rant to get you to chuckle a little bit. <laughs> As I think it's, it's, it's kind of funny in a way. Shake your head like, come on, people. But that's the end of today's vlog anyways. Let's end it on that note. Isn't that a great note to end it on? I'm so sorry. I hope you still feel like tuning in tomorrow. I promise we won't talk about it all day. I'll have to remember that I promised not to talk about it in the morning. But if I forget, don't hold me accountable. I have a forgetful brain. I'll try my best to remember not to talk about the smell in the morning. <laughs> oh, this is why people think we're disgusting, dirty, greasy trackers. Because of this. The smell outside. Oh, yep, yep. Oh. Have a good night, everybody. We'll see you in the morning.